Even 10 years ago, Western firms tended to adapt an imperialistic attitude. Today, however, marketers must be prepared to scrutinize, analyze, and consider elements of culture when they want to establish a physical presence or launch a product in another country. This is perhaps uh, especially true for firms looking to do business in the Muslim world, where religion can be seen as an immutable element of the economic, cultural and political environment, forcing companies to adapt their offer and marketing practices. Today, Muslims make up over 23% of global population, more than 1.7 billion people. How should the firm adjust their tactics to tap into this market potential? Here are three key points to keep in mind. Muslim-majority countries are an extremely diverse group of states, from a cultural but also from an economic perspective. Choosing between global and local marketing strategies depends very much on the countries where the company is present. Qatar, for example, is the first country in the world in terms of GDP per capita. On the other hand, there are many Muslim-majority countries with extremely low GDPs, such as Somalia or the Comoros. Although it may be more difficult for marketers to address poorer regions, opportunities still exist because of the bottom of the pyramid approach and workers' remittances. Overall, growing GDPs coupled with an expanding demography mean that the Muslim world presents a promising area for growth. Religion is always considered to be the static element of culture, something that marketers cannot and should not try to change. Other elements of Islamic culture are more dynamic, where mass media and internet can have an enormous impact on consumer behavior and align it with Western trends. The arts, beauty standards and fashion are the most dynamic and cultural evolution can give certain businesses a boost. And in spite of the unifying factors of religion, Islamic countries still display a huge variety of social and cultural patterns. Yet Hofstede's dimensions of culture, which identify differences such as respect of hierarchy or degree of individualism, can be very helpful in identifying these differences. For example, since some Islamic societies score lower on Hofstede's power distance index, identifying an attachment to egalitarianism, showing wealth does not pose a problem. Will your firm be able to enter a given country or will it face political and legal barriers? The main example of a political barrier is the boycott of one company or one country, as it is the case with the Arab League boycott of Israel, forcing companies to choose if they will serve the Israeli market or Arab League markets alone. Still, other boycotts are non-official, but nonetheless impactful. The legal environment addresses the use or not of Sharia law as well as standardization and certification issues. For two industries at least, Islamic finance and halal food, the harmonization of standards and mutual acceptance of certifications, but it is a prerequisite for market expansion. The marketer is therefore stuck between the economic rationale of serving a growing and more affluent population and the political overtones it can initiate.